everyone. It's me, Janky P, coming in with a new video. It's been a while. I'm ready. Been struggling a bit, but what I want to talk about today, my new favourite occultist, and his motto is just try. Let thy motto be just try. So I'm giving it a go. It's a Wednesday. I've come up with a cool new concept, ingenious some might say, probably not though, it's Wednesday, so my new concept, you know, there's Mystic Mondays, Tarot Tuesdays, I've come up with a new original thing, Wistic Wednesdays, yes, Wistic Wednesdays, so it's Wistic like Mystic, but with W-I for Widdishins, which as most of you know, is my favourite direction, anti-clockwise, a direction of like chaos, transformation, destruction maybe, as opposed to clockwise, which is the direction of healing and growth, because as you know, I'm a Widdishins witch, you know, infinity goes both ways, you can't just have love and light, sometimes you're going to get your hands dirty. So, Wistic like Mystic, Wednesday, well as I said it's Wednesday, Wednesday is the day of Mercury aka Hermes or Thoth, the great magical messenger, so Wednesdays is supposedly the day for communication, receiving messages, these kind of things, so this is why I'm doing my videos on a Wednesday and ones, well you know like a magical wand and as most as you know I have quite an impressive collection of magical wands, but may I add humble collection. I don't really buy any of they find me on the street. And you know, with this new tradition of Wistic Wednesdays, I'm probably going to be kind to myself and not try and make a video every Wednesday, but maybe let's try twice a month. Let's see. So yes, Wistic Wednesdays. Here is the first one. I really want to talk about my fa new favourite occultist. I mean, I've been fiending over him for like the past month. Of course, he's long dead, and his name is Pascal Beverly Randolph. Black occultist. He lived in the US from like 1825 to 1875, which was like Civil War era. He was friends with Abraham Lincoln, sex magician, medium founder of like Rosicrucianism in the US, one of the first people to introduce ideas of sexual magic. Some people say that Eleanor Brother killed him with um, black magic and then stole all his ideas. So there's a lot to like about this guy. He was an outspoken abolitionist and his tale is very interesting. I was very excited to learn about him. And this is who I want to talk about today. Before we dive in and hear about Pascal Beverly Randolph, for Wistic Wednesdays, I want to like introduce you all to my magic wands each week. So this is the one we have here. Get ready. It doesn't necessarily look majestic. Da -da. This is the wand of the week. Yes, it's a battered old feather, but magical nonetheless. And this is why I said that my wand collection is quite humble. As I said, I'm not going getting like the hundred euro, I don't know, carefully crafted and made elder one that I just get them myself. Maybe one day when I upgrade my witchy status, I can have the real magic one, but these are pretty good. So this one, the tail of this one, yes, it looks battered, but when it came into my possession, it was a fine specimen. And so this one, so basically the story of this wand me and my good pal, our new tradition, most on the full moon, is to do a thing called techno drifting. You know, we're missing the party, we're missing dancing, being all Larry on the streets or in the club. So techno drifting is essentially listening to a podcast and drifting through the streets. So the first time we did this, we let's say energized ourselves with some magical um consumables or sniffables should i say and as soon as we did that we set off on our direction we were heading towards like berghain what's it called um i want to say wienerstrasse but that's not what its name that's not what its name is 
in a way, you know, like Warschau, Strasbourg, Kaitenland. And as soon as we turned a corner, there was like what I call a Suvashenken box, like a box on the street of things that people want to give away. So we prepared our techno drifting, turned the corner and boom, there was a box of feathers. So of course we took one each and as I said, when we got them, they were like majestic specimens. Now it's all battered, but so set off on our techno drifting waving these in people's faces oh get the glitter yeah we also found like these magical ribbons on the street and if any of you see me in the club especially one with the garden part you know i was the dance with a good stick in my hand so we found these it really helped with our dancing and yet it's all battered because by the end of it so like we went round Burkheim, we were dancing out the front and then by the time i come back it was all battered and janky and I thought it was a very good metaphor because you know when you go to the party when you start your techno drifting you're looking all fabulous and you know your hair's not all kinky like this even though your mind might be um, and then when you get back you know you're like a disheveled mess but you're feeling fantastic so for me this is a reminder of the party, the party power and the magic inherent within. So this is my first wand of the week. Now let's get on to talking about Pascal Beverly Randolph. Just try, let thy motto be just try, I shall. So Pascal Beverly Randolph, as I said, black occultist, sex magician, living in America from 1825 to 1705. So he's really like a pioneer, maybe that's not the right word for him, but pioneer of sexual magic. And seems like a lot of the like Western occultists essentially kind of stole his ideas, or let's say used his ideas without crediting his work or actually towards the end of his life. It seems like a lot of these white ceremonial magicians discredited his work which is very fishy but seems to always be the classic tale of things that happen and this is why it's important to talk about him so pascal his mother was flora beverly and his father edmund randall so edmund randall was a um what's a senator i want to say no a governor of virginia supposedly related to uh, william randall who was a great colon i'm not going to say great he was a large colonizer of virginia back in like the 1600s or what have you um so white father his mother flora beverly so throughout um pascal's writings so sometimes he says that she was a black princess from madagascar who was enslaved could have been an african-american woman he says he has english french origins you know like most occultists they give themselves fantastical narratives which adds to the mystery and you know i like him i like the way he talks about himself he has just like really good vibes in his writing so i feel like compared to like for example if i'm reading alistair crowley or like all these other like old school occultists it's just a bit too serious or you know, with Pascal Beverly Randall, if you don't have to read his work and worry, is he a white supremacist? Because I'm pretty sure I was an outspoken abolitionist. Black man. Definitely not. Where am I going with this? So, from an early age, he was an orphan. So, I think he's very close with his mother. And it was her whose motto this try business is all about. So, he says, let thy motto be try. Despond not. But ever remember that how bitter soever our lot may be, that despite it all, we may be happy yet. So this, I was very happy to discover this motto or mantra and it's been with me for a few weeks now. Another thing I read that he said was like, you know, because with the sex magic and all like occult practices, it also requires, you know, it's not just about going banging everyone, you have to do this like, internal training like meditation yoga although he doesn't describe it as yoga uh, volantis i think is what he says when you're like focusing on points and internal journeying i'm getting a bit lost yeah so aside from the sex magic it involves you know breathing practices and stuff and something else that he said that has stuck with me is like when you're breathing in 
hold it in just a few seconds longer and it will add 10 minutes to your life. You'll thank yourself for it in the future. So whenever I'm doing yoga breathing, his little voice comes in my head saying, try a bit longer. Where am I going with this? This is just a disaster. Just try, just try, keep going. So. His mother died at an early age and he was essentially orphaned or I'm not sure if his father, you know, like white governor of Virginia probably didn't pay much attention. Um, so he went and travelled the world working on a ship and he saw lots of mystical places. You know, he went to, I don't know if this is when he was working on the ships because he travelled later in life as well, but he went to like Syria, Turkey places in the Middle East and um, later in life he went to France and was with blooming I don't know how to say anyone's name Eliphias Levy and Napoleon III doing all ceremonial magic business anyway when he went back to the United States got involved with, like spiritualism he later distanced himself from like spiritual seances um, because he was against this idea of blending where you kind of are not in control or of when spirits enter you he's quite a lot of self-control, a lot of will, which is again a common theme in Western occultism. Who got all these ideas, took them as their own. I'm getting all hot and bothered. Must be all the sex magic. Yeah, so let's get to what I'm sure you all want to know is the sex magic element of Dr. Pascal Beverly Randall's work. So, as I said, he's writing, I think these sex magic books came out in like 1865 which as a black man educated or like self-educated outspoken also moving in elite circles as i said like friends of abraham lincoln also like founded the ulis is it the hermetic order of ulis i need to do more research there's so much i want to say about him i'm getting a bit lost so in terms of the sex magic business as I said, he was writing, I think the sex magic book came out, or like his ideas and his writings were from like the 1850s onwards when he came back from his travels. And let's just think about it for a moment. We've got a black man talking about sex in Victorian um, Civil War times or in America. Probably has to like, he's navigating quite a tricky path, but he does so with confidence and a lot of like knowledge to back up what he's saying. So his key ideas, also like product of the time, so his books about sex magic, it's very like classic of the time in terms of he's looking at it as like a sexual science and he talks about like negative and positive poles, vital fluids and like charging yourself. Um, but some of the key ideas which have then, anyone who's like, Curious about sex magic has probably heard all these before because as I said like a lot of his ideas were have then disseminated throughout the western occultist tradition so main thing is when you orgasm you can manifest things if you like do a visualization at the most like it's like the most energetically charged moment is orgasm so we have that also this idea of retaining the white fire, let's say. Um, but what was quite radical and revolutionary at his time was he was really in favour of mutual orgasms, which if you imagine in the Victorian days, female orgasm was probably quite a taboo subject, but he was well down, like the most powerful magic is when like a male and a female, or like a man and a woman orgasm at the same time. Again, think of the time so and also like I think with a lot of occultists you shouldn't take everything what they say you should take it with a pinch of salt or don't take it at face value you know he also in his introductions has these common tropes of do not give pearls to a swine but so from the Victorian era he does it's heterosexual and he also says that it should be done in the confines of marriage not sure if like in practice that was always the case but let's remember I said black man in like Victorian can you even say Victorian for America but like 19th century America 
what he's saying already is quite radical. He probably has to like tread carefully in what he's saying. So he's got his sexual magic stuff and he's also quite a practical man. So he would like sell tonics and potions to help people with, for example, I'm going to say impotency or like, you know, love spells and magic. And in some of these like bitchy writings from white Western occultists who try to discredit him, I think they're kind of saying these things like he was a bit of a charlatan because he sold these potions. But has to make a living somehow and he's very respected and it sounds like all his stuff really worked. Um, but really, and I think this is why I'm dithering because what I wanted to say earlier is talking about myself, good God. But like, because I'm trying to like get my brain out of the academic thinking. So I discovered Pascal or his ideas came into my like mental periphery, magical purview through a few different channels. But the first one, I was looking at the Instagram stories of Gabrielle Herstick, the Venus, Babylonian, Oracle, dealing with some kind of kinky business, but it's also very just like photogenic, artistic. I'm not sure if she's out there getting her hands dirty. Anyway, her Instagram story had a picture of sexual magic, the book, so I googled it and then I saw that there is an academic study by, I think he's called H.B. Urban, He's done a study of like sexual magic in the West, academic text, and I was like, oh, this is interesting. Had a quick look because it's free online, and of course, was then introduced to the work of Pascal Beverly Randolph. Now, what I want to say is, as I'm trying to like uncouple my mind from academia, I decided, I mean, I've read it now, but at the time, a month ago, I was like, I'm not going to read like a white academics man's idea or like yeah idea or research on Pascal Beverly Randolph I'm going to get straight to the meat of the matter so on the one hand I've been reading some of his texts like sexual magic but also what I really want to talk about I'm just gonna say don't judge a book by its cover this book Creole Fire which I finished it oh, I was really sad to finish it because I wanted it to go on forever it's a book by um, Tiana Lee McQuiller, who, well, oh god, there's just too much to say about this book. I really, really enjoyed it. It's like an imagined romance or like encounter between Pascal Beverly Randolph and the daughter of Marie Laveau, who, if you don't know, Marie Laveau was um, a voodoo priestess, let's say, an uh, outspoken community leader and mambo of New Orleans in the 1800s and her daughter Philomene, is that how you say it? Philomena, Marie Philomena, her daughter was also like a priestess and quite powerful in terms of like on the one hand magical practice, on the other like community organisation and leadership. So this book is an imagined romantical encounter between Dr. Randolph and the daughter Philomene. And yeah, as I said, trying to get away from academia. Reading this book, okay, so there's no historical evidence that the two met, but it's just a really great way to immerse yourself into this world and like have the characters and the spirit of the people there with you. You kind of walk in with them as they're going through like their day-to-day -day life. And it's also just a great educational tool. I've learned a lot. It's complicated people's characters. So what year is it set in? 1864. So this is like peak civil war times. And for example, there's some I'm getting distracted by the words. So for example, there's two people in here who are like um, Creole, which I guess would be like mixed race. I'm not sure if that's really the correct term to use anymore. Uh, slave owners, so non-white slave owners. And it just like, just the characters, you know, you meet Marie Laveau, you meet Dr. John, all these occult figures. It's also written as kind of poetic prose which is also how many of um, Pascal Beverly Randolph's texts were presented. So I would recommend this 
very much. I'm gonna stop, it's too hot. Okay, last words on Pashal Beverly Randolph, or I'm gonna tie it together before the sun blooming melts me. So this book by Tayana Lee McQuilla, as I said, um, Pascal was coming to me through a few different channels, so first discovered him through his sexual magic book. And I was like, the name rings a bell. And then I remembered about Tayana Lee McQuilla. So I listened to an episode of The Witch Wave, this podcast with Pam Grossman, who I've talked about. She has great guests, asks great questions, but it's a little bit commercial and a little bit twee. But so the episode for this is from like November, I'll post the link below. Where they talk with Tayana, who is from the United States, African-American woman, does research on, um, for example, and research and practices like root work, hoodoo, also has made uh, two tarot decks. One is the Sibyl's Oraculum, which is looking at um, the oracles of Libya, who predated like the oracles of Delphi and stuff when they were women. So that tarot deck is beautiful. And also she has the Hoodoo Tarot, which after listening to this podcast episode, I had a long think of myself of whether I should, but I did end up getting the Hoodoo Tarot because, as I said, both these books are great sources of knowledge and wisdom, which you're probably not going to find in the, I was going to say, dusty shells of academia. So as a learning tool, these are fantastic. And I'd like to talk about this a bit more in one of my next videos where I talk about like cultural appropriation and my use or ownership of such tools and whether it's problematic or how we can have a kind of um, ethical practice of using these things and for example talking about Pascal Beverly Randolph as a white woman um, so where am I going so I already have the hoodoo tarot so I was like wait a minute I heard this name before on the same podcast they do talk about this excellent novel Creole Fire which I enjoyed very much thank you Tayana for sharing this magical beautiful tale and encounter with us all now i've got something burning in the oven so i better get going but i shall see you next wednesday all of you or in the astral realm oh i didn't even get to talk about helena blavatsky but i fear for my favorite body but i'll just say google how he died the circumstances i'll leave it at that bye bye